What would you say attracted you first to the role of Lorelai on Gilmore Girls? Well, so I've done it twice, right? And the, and the first time I was really attracted to the language. It, it made me, um, I connected to it in the way I connected to things I'd done in theater. It felt a little heightened. It felt, um, you know, I, the character had these speeches and this great banter. And so I was just drawn to the voice, drawn to the, the sound of this world. I thought it was so unique. And at the time, um, everybody, it was sort of my peer group, uh, saw it as a mom role pr predominantly. And, and there was all sorts of discussion of, you know, I was whatever I was, 30, one or two and and you know was it a bad idea to to play a mom to a teenager and that that would age me and that you know and I just never it, that is not the first thing I thought of or the third thing I just thought this is a great relationship and and a world I wanted to spend time in and I, I don't know if you have this feeling um, I remember reading somewhere that Christopher Reeve said he knew a part was right for him when he just couldn't stand the idea of anybody else doing it and that's how I felt about Lorelai I was like get out of my way like I just felt like it 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 was you know it was mine <laughs> right but I think that's also so fascinating because we are, we never know what parts we're going to get whether we fall in love with them or not and I I agree with you that I think that when you feel it so innately like it's already yours there's mm -hmm. really no stopping you which mm -hmm. means it was the role you were always meant to play I can't think of another time I've felt that strongly um and, and what I didn't realize at the time was how rare that connection is. It's really like falling in love. It's like meeting someone, you know, and, and love at first sight. It's just, it's, it has some sort of chemical uh, c connection that you just, you don't, I think back then I thought, oh, I'll probably have, you know, two or three of these that I'll feel this way about. And now I, I have a different perspective. How and did, but did you even imagine how much both of those characters on the show would just become such a phenomenon of a relationship between like a mom and a daughter. It just hadn't been on television before. It's, you never know, as you're saying, you, you never know if how people will connect or if they'll connect. And, um, and the fact now looking back that it was so unique to see um, a single mom and a daughter who really related more as friends than, than in any traditional way. Um, you know, this was still a time when M Murphy Brown had just gone off the air and that, that uh, you know, was sort of an innovative idea that she was going to be a single mom and it was controversial even. And um, so that was unique. And then also the idea that it stuck with people. You know, I remember after years after the show was done, ha seeing a young, very young girl who couldn't possibly have watched it in real time mm -hmm. be enamored of, of the show. And I thought, oh, this is like what Laverne and Shirley was for me or oh. Mary Tyler Moore or something. It was like, I didn't watch it when it was on, but it meant so much to me in reruns. But you can never predict that as you, as I know. you know. But, and that's, thank God. Thank yes. God we <laughs> now have a ways and means for people to watch stuff. Nobody knows when anything is on anymore anyway. No. So if they could think that Gilmore Girls is actually on uh, right, that's right now. That's right. You know, because now yeah. there's a new show. And so they're like, oh, it never ended. Right. And, and so it's interesting to see what, stands the test of time, you know, what people continue to connect to years later, and there's just no, no predicting that.